This is part three of the Nerd Sidekick tutorial on working with files. In part one, we looked at a program called File Explorer and got an orientation of the program interface. In part two, you learn how to cut, copy, paste, move, and delete files. You can see part two by clicking the link up here or check the description below for links to all parts of this File Explorer tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn how to rename files and learn about file extensions, the strange dot and letters you see at the end of your file names. You'll also learn how to add folders and how to organize your files with those folders. And finally, we'll examine libraries. You're watching a video from the Mom and Dad Technology Tutorial Series. I'm making this mad TNT video series for my mom, who sometimes struggles with technology. Don't get mad and blow up trying to help someone close to you. Instead, just send them this video. Let's get started. First, I'll open File Explorer by pressing the Window key and simultaneously pressing the E key. In our last video, we duplicated a file and in the process, File Explorer auto-generated the file name Notes from Meeting-Copy, but I want to change the name of this file. There are several ways to do that. Make sure the file you want to rename is selected, then click the Rename button at the top. The file name is highlighted, and as soon as you start typing, the highlighted text is replaced with whatever you type. Press Enter on your keyboard, or just click anywhere other than the text you type, and the name is changed. Let's change the name again. I'll right click on the file and choose Rename from the pop-up menu. Again, the file name is highlighted and I can start typing to replace the name. I'll save the new name again. Now let's change the name again by clicking the file to make sure it's selected. Wait a second, then click again on the text and the file name is now selected and editable. If you click too fast, you will actually double click and launch this file. So just click once, then wait a second, and click again. I will control drag the notes from meeting file one more time to create another duplicate. I'll click the duplicate file to select it. Wait a second, then click again. The file name is selected. But this time I don't want to erase the file name that is already there. Instead, I want to add a date at the end of the name. So I'll just click just to the right of the letter Y and now I backspace and delete the word copy and type the date and hit enter to change the name. If you make a mistake while you're typing and want to start over, just press the escape key before saving the name and the name will, will revert back to its original name. One thing to note about file names is that they will always have a dot followed by a few letters at the end of the file name. This is called a file name extension. By default, you won't see these when using File Explorer. I'm old school, so I like to see these extensions. You can turn these on or off by clicking the View tab and checking or unchecking file name extensions. I'll turn them on now. If you have the extensions turned on, it is critical that you not erase the extension. The extension tells Windows what program the file is associated with, so it will launch the correct program when you open the file. For example, notes from meeting.txt is a text file. On my system, and most likely on yours as well, the .txt extension is associated with the notepad program that is included on all Windows systems. So when I double click this file to open it, the notepad program is automatically launched and the file is opened in notepad. If I erase .txt and save the file name, Windows warns me of impending disaster. Let's accept the disaster and click yes. Note what happens. In the type column, the file type is simply file. Windows doesn't know what program the file is associated with. If I double click the file, Windows will ask me what program to use to open the file. I'll just escape out of that and add .txt back to the file name. Text document appears again in the type column. 
Now if I double click the file, it automatically opens in Notepad like it should. Disaster averted. You can change a file name extension to something else, but that won't change the true nature of a file's type. For example, if I change this pictures extension to .txt, it doesn't magically become a usable text document. While the file does have data that the Notepad program can see, it does not make this a picture you can view in Notepad. Likewise, if I add the extension associated with most pictures, .jpg, to the notes from meeting.txt file, I can't magically turn this file into a picture. When I try to open this now, my default picture editor warns me that the file is not usable. Next, let's talk about folders. Folders are critical to organizing files. Without folders, you would have thousands of files all in the same place. Finding and working with the right files would be difficult. Folders let you group files in a logical manner. For example, you could create a reports folder by clicking the new folder button, then drag all your reports into that folder. You can also create a folder by right clicking in an empty spot, click new and folder. A new folder is created and you are prompted to change the name. If you don't type something, the folder is left with the name new folder. You can rename it later, but I'd suggest naming it right away. You can, of course, have folders within folders. Let's say I'm starting a new project. I'll create a new folder. This time I'll use the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift N. If you forget a keyboard shortcut, just hover your mouse over the button and the tooltip will tell you what it is. I'll name the folder House Project and click into that new folder. I'll create a new folder and call it Pictures. Next, I'll add a folder called Documents and another called Reports. I'll drill down into the pictures folder and create a folder named before and another named after. You can see that I have quickly set up an organized structure for the files related to the house project. There are folders within folders, so I can, for example, have a, uh, pictures of the project before work was started and pictures after the project was completed. Think about logical ways to organize the files that you use. And remember that you can always change a folder name later and you can add additional folders at any time. And you can move files to a different folder in case something changes. So nothing is set in stone. Your file and folder structure is completely under your control at any time. Now that you understand how to move files around, using a folder structure to organize your files shouldn't be scary or intimidating. If you are sharing files with other people, using an organized file structure will help other people to understand the files. And if you are the only one using the files, if you have to view the files months or years later, Organizing them in this manner will help you to remember what the files were and will help you find specific files more easily. In part one of this tutorial, I briefly talked about libraries. Let's take a closer look at libraries and how they can help you better organize your files. Out of the box, Windows has several libraries already set up for you. Click on Libraries over here in the Navigation pane or drill down in the Address bar. The default libraries include Camera Roll, Documents, Music, Pictures, Saved Pictures, and Videos. Each user account on your computer has its own set of libraries. So if your computer is shared among several users, each with their own Windows login, each of you will control your own libraries. So when you look at the contents of the libraries, you are seeing only your files. So what exactly is a library? Libraries organize files that you wish to group together into a single access point. I use the term access point because the actual files may be found in separate locations on your computer's drive and even on different drives. So a library could have documents from drive C and drive G, for example. 
The library lets you access all those diversely located files in one single access point, again known as a library. Libraries make working with files convenient and help keep you organized if you use them. A good thing about the document library, for example, is that many programs save your documents there by default, so they help you stay organized. Let's take a look at my documents library. I'll double click it to open and you see the files and file locations that make up this library. The files on my C drive in the users slash Fred directory are included and my OneDrive files are also included. OneDrive is Microsoft's cloud storage service and if you are using that or sign into a Microsoft account, you'll probably see a similar folder included in this library. If you wanted to manage a library, make sure a library is selected. Then notice the contextual tab that has appeared on your ribbon. Click on Library Tools, then click Manage Library. This dialog box shows you the current locations included in your library. You can add another location by clicking the Add button and navigating to the folder you wish to add. The location does not have to be on your C drive. In fact, I'll navigate to my D drive and click on the folder Add to Documents Library. Then click Include Folder. The folder now appears in the library locations. Click OK. Back in the Documents Library, the newly added folder from the other drive is included and you can see the contents of that folder. You can also specify the default location for saving documents. So, for example, when you create a document in Microsoft Word and save it, the save location you specify here is where Word will default to saving a file. To change this, I'll click Set Save Location and click on the location I just added, Add to Documents Library. Click Manage Library again and you see the default save location is now the newly added library location. Let's say you no longer need to see parts of the library that you currently use. You can quickly remove that location from your library. Just click that location and click Remove. Notice that the default save location switched back to the original documents folder. When I click OK, the location is removed from the library. Removing a location from a library does not delete the files from your computer. They are still there. I'll navigate to the D drive and you see the folder and its contents were spared the ax. You can create your own library if you so desire. With library selected in the navigation pane, go to the Home tab on the ribbon and click New Item. Then click Library. The library icon appears. Type a name. I'll call this Nerd Sidekick Stuff. When I open the library, there's nothing in it, of course, and there's a button to include a folder. As before, I'll navigate to the D drive and add the Add to Documents Library folder. I'll also navigate to my existing documents library and include that. And you can see that including an entire library within a library is perfectly acceptable. You can get creative with libraries, gathering together folders and files from all over your computer for a single cohesive location to access your files. If you look back at the libraries included with Windows, you can see that the icons are related to their contents. For example, the music library has a musical note as its icon, and the pictures library looks like a picture. You can change the icon by clicking the library, then click Change Icon. You'll be presented with a dialog box with a bunch of different icons to choose from, or you can specify a file location if you have your own icon. You should also optimize your library for the type of files you put in it. This setting will determine what layout is used by default to display the contents of a library and what data columns are included when you open the library. For example, if you look at the music library, you see the name, contributing artist, album, track number, and title. A documents library shows the name, date modified, file type, and size. 
We've covered a lot of information in this File Explorer tutorial, including how to rename files, work with file name extensions, how to organize your files with folders, and finally we looked at libraries and how to use them for greater organization. If you have questions and comments, please post those in the comment section below this video. And be sure to click the like button if this video helped you. There's still more to learn, including how to use the search function so you can find specific files or locate lost files. Click the video here to access part four now. You can view all of the mom and dad technology tutorials by clicking the playlist here. Click here to subscribe to the Nerd Sidekick channel to be notified of new videos as they are released. I'm Fred Kelly, your Nerd Sidekick, making you the technology hero.